Hi everyone. I hope I hope all of you are doing well in this ongoing COVID situation in the lockdown procedure. So although it's uh, none of our it's none of our fault, but uh, uh, life in the show must go on. Uh, so uh, today I'm I'm Farhat, and today I'm going to talk about Engineers Australia Skill Assessment and how you can get it done and few tricks and tips for, for you. As you are already aware that uh, there are several pathways for to get your skill assessment done to Engineers Australia, such as uh, Sydney Accord, Washington Accord, Dublin Accord. If you are uh, if uh, your institution and uh, your academic qualification fall fall under those um, category you can get yourself assessed straight away and uh, the case officer will assign you the nominated occupation based on your qualification however uh, so my for today's focus will be on cdr which is the competency demonstration report and most of the people go through this process pathway for engineers Australia assessment so as you are already aware that you need uh, IELTS uh, 6 each or PT 50 um, the rest of the things EV uh, you know you are already uh, aware of it but most of the people struggle a lot of uh, to make the CDA documents so CDA documents include three career episodes uh, so these three career episodes should uh, should involve uh, three distinctive project reports it should be based on that I mean uh, that each carry one each carry episode should be distinctive it shouldn't have any sort of similarities with each other and uh, it should be based on some project reports you did during your maybe bachelor or masters or anything so but make so make sure that when you submit your career episodes uh, you also have the project reports with you because sometimes case officer will ask for that and you need to provide um, no evidence that these projects actually belong to you. Um, so, for each career, in each career episode, you need to mention how you perform the engineering activities, how you identified the solution, and uh, the technical difficulties you faced, and why you chose this chose this path, and how, what was the role of your supervisor and everything. But mostly, you need to focus on. The part you did because as we know that uh, each uh, um, during our during a bachelor or master uh, sometimes we do projects or maybe most of the time we do projects in group but care episode it should they should highlight or it should outline your uh, uh, activities based on um, regarding each care episode so you just need to mention the part you did and what was the contribution and uh, how how you did manage to get it done so make sure to put the organizational chart on each care in each career episode where it, it will show some sort of hierarchy that okay the head of the department then you give create a flow chart then you show your supervisor's name then your team member's name and your name it is it's, it is always um, recommended that you highlight your name there mm. And then you mention your activities one by one, one after another. Make sure you use your technical language, not the one we read through the magazines or newspaper. Um, uh, in addition, if you want to um, use any kind of reference or anything, make sure you provide uh, enough credit, even if if the publication belongs to you as well. So because we need to uh, you need to ensure that there is absolutely no type of plagiarism or similarity inside your career episode otherwise the case officer will, so will will reject your um, documentation and it might lead to one year of ban as well so career episode should contain so to summarize career episodes should contain your your contribution how to how what are the, what are the technical difficulties you faced and how you solve these problems in terms of numerical simulation or experimental programs the tools you used and everything make sure to use your original photos and figures do not never copy or paste anything from the literature review or something which don't belong to you because they want to see what the, your contribution so um, uh, putting all the technical jargon from different papers or books so won't give you a positive outcome so just be honest and uh, be with your integ integrity you will be able to you know in a crack these uh, career episodes next comes cpd which is pretty much obvious it's like a chart 
CBD means continuous professional development as any um, so it you should just um, in a proper timeline preferably in chronological order or maybe from the latest to oldest one it's up to you both, both those are fine you should just mention that how how you developed yourself as a professional engineer you should maybe you should begin maybe from your bachelor's degree then after bachelor's degree since you came here most of you had bachelor's degree from overseas then maybe you did your masters from australia so after you done did your bachelor's of course there is a gap between masters so there shouldn't be any gap in your cpd you could mention that okay uh, we you studied you were you were preparing for your IELTS or PTE or maybe you were reading or preparing any literature review through this any kind of journal or anything so just make sure uh, there is absolutely no time no gap not even for a single month in your in your CPD from your bachelor's to master's people who only have bachelor's degree you can mention some of the activities you did after finishing your uh, bachelor such as internship any kind of a small project reports or any kind of a small projects you did um, in collaboration an academic collaboration or an industrial collaboration or maybe combine it together in any case you should provide a compelling reason that you have developed yourself as a professional engineer uh, which is i mean uh, uh, which will uh, uh, which will uh, convince the case officer to give you a positive outcome and give you the um, the outcome later based on your nominated occupation because when you apply for CDR CDR pathway you will have the opportunity to choose the occupation you want but of course it's a, it's completely it should be in light in the light of the, your academic qualification another important part is summary statement you will find the summary statement template on engineers Australia website this one they, they will provide you some criteria or some professional engineering activities you just need to mention those part how you did it and where did you did it you need and in the third column you need to mention that where in carriage episodes in which section maybe let's say it's mentioned in section 2.3 you just mentioned that that okay it's mentioned in section 2.3 so uh, in, in each category it should be made all the categories should be mentioned in the all of the carriage episodes so it's not that they are asking for one specific requirement and you're just saying that okay it's mentioned in category episode two point or category episode one only it should be mentioned in all the category episodes because this is how you can um tell them that okay you have actually done this type of work so the case officer will based on your summary statement your case officer will uh, go scan through the category episodes whether you have actually mentioned those or not if they are not happy they might give you a chance to revise or might they might not give you the chance as well they might not give you the chance even to revise so make sure whenever you submit your files it's already ready for some ready for decision so then let them decide what what you want to do next so this is a uh, although things are not that good at the moment but there is a few there are a few tricks which we can provide you uh, to get yourself assessed, get your, get your, get you a uh, positive outcome letter from Engineers Australia within just within maybe within a week if you are going through fast track application. Now that the, there there is the trick which we can tell you, and uh, uh, it should be uh, based on the based on the profile of the applicant, and of course you need to contact us. Then we can so that we can share to share, share the tricks and tips for that this is this is the best time to apply for engineers australia skill assessment so if you are looking for some if you're looking for the your skill assessment done that's the this is the perfect opportunity for you don't miss out and feel free to contact in high consultants for any of the technical advice or any professional advice you need we will be there to help you out thank you very much